Hi everyone, welcome to module three. In this module we will be moving into beams and frames. Because beams and frames are different from trusses, we'll need to modify our approaches to stability and indeterminacy, as well as our approaches to solving for internal loads. In this lesson, we'll be focusing specifically on stability and determinacy, and so our goals are to calculate whether a structure is stable or not and what the degree of indeterminacy is. And we will also look at special cases to determine whether a beam or frame is properly supported or configured. Let's first begin by discussing the differences between trusses and frames. In terms of joints, frames are allowed to have fixed connections like you see at points A, C, E, and B. If you recall, this was not the case for trusses, which could only have pinned connections. In addition, frames can also have pin or hinge joints, as you see in point D. Reactions can be rollers, as in point B. They can be pins, as in point A. And they can also be fixed which is not shown here in the diagram. In terms of members, just like trusses, beams, and frames can develop internal axial forces, which can be either in compression or tension. But unlike trusses, they can also develop both shear and moment. The result is that there is now a greater number of unknowns for beams and frames. Now because beams can carry both moment and shear, frames can support loads applied anywhere on the structure. So for example, we can apply a point load and mid span. We can apply distributed loads and any other load combinations that we want without being limited to applying them at the joints as was the case with trusses. Notice that these loads lead to internal shear and moment distributions in each of the beams. Now we will learn how to calculate these distributions a little bit later on, but for now, all you need to know is that in order to define these distributions, the information that we need is the loading configuration as well as the supporting loads for each beam. So for example, for the horizontal beam, we would need to know the internal moments, shear, and axial loads at points B and points C. So armed with that knowledge, let's look at how to evaluate determinacy for a frame. And we will do this in the same way as we did before with trusses, by counting the number of unknowns versus the number of available equations. So let's take the following frame and break it up into individual three body diagrams for each member, which are three in this case, AB, BC, and CD, as well as each joint, which are four in this case, joint A, B, C, and D. Now let's think of the loads that we will need to solve for. For each member, we will need to solve for the shear, moment, and axial forces on each side of the beam. So let's take AB for example, we would need to solve for AX, AY, the moment at A, as well as BX, BY, and the moment at B. So that is six unknowns per member. For each joint, we don't need to solve for anything additional because the loads on each joint are already determined by the members. So BY, BX, and MB, for example, have already been determined from the member itself. So this is not an additional unknown in any case. So for each joint, we have zero new unknowns. We do, however, need to solve for the reactions on the frame. So that would be AY, AX, and DY. And so we do need to take those into account. In terms of equations, all members and all joints need to be continuously in equilibrium. So 
for each free, free body diagram, we have three sets of equilibrium conditions. So three for each member and three for each joint. All right, now let's formalize this in terms of our M's and R's and J's terminology. So the number of unknowns is equal to six times the number of members plus the number of reactions. The number of available equations is equal to three times the number of members plus three times the number of joints. However, let's consider the case that one of the fixed joints is changed to a pin joint. In that case, we actually release one of the degrees of freedom and effectively eliminate an unknown, in this case, the moment around that joint. Another way to think about this is that we're adding an additional equation. So for the pin, we're adding an equation that specifies that the sum of moments around that pin should be equal to zero. So we call these types of equations equations of condition, denoted by the variable E sub C. So for a pin, we have one additional equation of condition. For a roller, we would have two, one for the moment around the roller and one for the forces parallel to the roller surface. So all in all, a total number of independent equations must include the equations of condition of the frame. Therefore, we have 3m plus 3j plus E sub C. If we put the two equations equal to each other from the last slide, we would have 6m plus r equal to 3m plus 3j plus ec. However, we can simplify that by moving all m's to one side to get 3m plus r equal to 3j plus ec. So that is our final condition for static determinacy. We have three possible cases. If the left-hand side, as in case one, is less than the right-hand side, then the structure is unstable. We have less unknowns than equations. If they're both equal, then the structure is stable and statically determinate. And if the left-hand side is greater than the right-hand side, as in case three, then the structure is statically indeterminate. Now keep in mind that for cases two and three, you must in addition verify that the structure is configured correctly and that reactions are not parallel and not concurrent. So let's look at a few examples. These first two are cases of instability where the structure is partially constrained. In other words, it doesn't have appropriate reactions. The case on the left-hand side has only two reactions. This should be a dead giveaway that the structure in rigid body equilibrium alone is not properly constrained. So in this case, the roller on the right can move up and the roll on the left can move to the right. So therefore, the whole structure can rotate. So in cases that less than three reactions, you can conclude that the structure is unstable. In the right-hand case, the structure does have three reactions. However, those three reactions do not properly constrain the structure to be rigid. So as you can see, the reaction on the left allows the first member to rotate, and the reaction on the right allows the right support to move, let's say to the right. Therefore, the frame can actually deform in the following manner. Here are some more examples of improper constraints. So let's take a slightly different frame. This time it's been pinned at point A, so it does have indeed three total reactions. But notice that how the addition of that extra reaction at A doesn't change things very much because 
all forces are concurrent through point A. Therefore, any force applied to the structure that induces a moment around A, let's say a lateral load here at the top, cannot be adequately supported by these reactions. So the structure will rotate around that point. Similarly, if reactions are all parallel, as in the case of this continuous beam, the structure is also unstable. That is because any load perpendicular to those supports, such as this, will cause the beam to displace. Some of the trickiest instabilities to catch are mechanisms, such as three pins in a row, which you see here, B, C, and D. In this case, a vertical load at C would cause the following geometric deformation. Now this case might not be so obvious, but we can also check it by isolating certain sections of this structure. So let's take a section that includes B and C. Notice how the internal pins provide four total reactions to the section. However, three of those reactions are concurrent through point C. That means that BY has to both provide balance of forces in the Y direction as well as balance of moments around point C. Obviously it's impossible for one force to do both of those things. And so there is some inconsistency in the way that this structure is set up. If you were to solve this through you would get at some point an inconsistency where let's say a non-zero number is equal to zero. All right, so let's work through some examples. Let's start with compound beams and pin-connected structures. In the first example, the only tricky thing is considering what counts as a joint. Generally speaking, any support location will count as a joint. So therefore, we have three joints in this particular example and two members. Once we have that established, it's relatively easy to apply the equation for static determinacy. We have two members. We have six reactions. Notice that the fixed connection has three reactions associated with it. The roller has one and the pin has two. We have three joints and because there's no hinge or roller anywhere internal in the beam, there's zero equations of condition. Simplifying this, we get 12 greater than 9, which means that this structure is indeterminate. And our degree of indeterminacy I is 12 minus 9 or 3. Now let's look at the second example. Here we have three joints. We have two members and we have four reactions. Three at the fixed support and one at the roller. Applying the equation again we get three times two members plus four reactions is equal to three times three joints in this case, we do indeed have an internal pin that gives us one equation of condition. Therefore, we get 10 equal to 10. That would suggest that our structure is determinate. However, if we look closely, we notice that the second member is free to rotate around the pin joint and the roller actually cannot apply a moment around that joint in order to counteract that rotation because the reaction acts directly through that joint. Therefore this structure has a hinge-like mechanism that allows that second member to rotate. So it is unstable through improper configuration.
let's look at some examples of frames now. The first example has four joints, one for each reaction, as well as one for each member-to-member -member connection, and it has three members. The fixed support provides three reactions, and the pin support provides two. So applying the equation, we get, notice that the two equations of condition come from the two hinges internally. Summing all that up, we get 14 equal to 14. Now we still must check this to be sure that it is in fact configured correctly. The fixed support ensures that this stays at a 90 degree angle. The structure is free to rotate around this point. However, member one does provide a moment support for that particular member, member two. And in the same way, even though member one is free to rotate in that manner, member two does provide moment support in that direction. So that joint also stays at a right angle, and so does this joint. So it is properly configured, therefore we can see that it's statically determined. The second example is the same, except that the pins internally have been replaced with fixed connections. Therefore, the only difference is that the two equations of condition are removed. Therefore, now we have 14 equal to 12. This is indeterminate with degree of indeterminacy equal to 2. The last set of examples involves different types of structural loops. So let's look at the first example where we have four joints and four members. And each of the rollers provide a single reaction. Because there are no internal hinges, then the number of equations of condition is zero. Therefore we have, if we analyze this structure for improper constraints, we will observe that the reactions are not all parallel and not all concurrent. So wherever I apply a force, there is at least one reaction that is able to counteract the moment generated by that force. So even if I apply a force here and calculate its moments around, let's say, joint A, the reaction at joint C is able to counteract, and so it is properly configured and therefore statically indeterminate, with degree of indeterminacy 3. So sometimes you might encounter multi-story frames like the one you see here, which can get a little tedious to solve in the standard way. So there's a shortcut you can apply as long as you're sure that the structure is in fact con configured correctly. What we'll do is we'll split this into simpler structures which would, with which we can deal fairly easily. So in this case what we can do is we can actually introduce cuts at each of the girders to split this into four different structures. This is nothing more than a modified method of sections. So for example, the leftmost structure would look like this. Notice that to get to this section, we had to remove three constraints for each cut. So the degrees of indeterminacy that we removed to get here were three for each cut. However, the section itself is not stable. It's one reaction away from being stable because it's able to rotate. Therefore, we have to account for that, so we must subtract it from the total number. So we subtract the total number of pins. And this way we get 3 times 9 cuts minus 4 total pins in the structure is equal to 23. 
All right now let's look at the last example. This trick can be applied in almost any way you want. You just want to try to get to a final structure which you are confident in in terms of its degree of determinacy or indeterminacy. So in this case we can very easily create a statically determinate structure by simply removing the middle story. So we're going to make it cut here. Based on our experience that's a frame supported by four reactions but with one equation of condition for the pin joint here. So that is a statically determinate structure. But we've removed three degrees of determinacy to get there. So we can conclude that the degree of indeterminacy here is three times the number of cuts, which is one in this case, so we have three. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this lecture. Uh, in conclusion, we've talked about beams and frames and showed that just like trusses, they can be considered either stable, unstable, or statically indeterminate. The equations, however, are slightly different, so you need to take that into account. Um, and we have different methods for determining the degree of indeterminacy, depending on the type of structure. The, met the standard method doesn't change, but we can apply a few tricks to make the job easier. And finally, most importantly, we need to be conscious of stabilities that occur when certain mechanisms or improper restraints are introduced. So you always need to keep an eye out for those.